This video is sponsored by Normandy 1998. Yugi and Seto's eyes meet from across the table as they each shuffle their decks. Neither could have anticipated that of all the duelists on the island, it would come down to the two of them. But this is hardly the biggest matter on their minds, as both are aware of the risk the winner will have to take in facing Pegasus. Nonetheless, rather than shrink from the task, the two brothers have the same thought in that moment, that they must duel their very hardest, since it is the only way to ensure that whoever faces Pegasus is the best suited for the task. It is because of this thought that what Yugi does next comes as quite a shock to the Pharaoh, as he requests that the spirits stay out of this duel, allowing him to face his brother alone. At first, the Pharaoh assumes this is because of some lingering distrust, or also fear he might get overzealous and hurt Seto, though in a tone of conciliation, Yugi explains that actually he just feels that since it's his brother, this should be between the two of them, asking the Pharaoh to put his trust in him like he has agreed to with the ancient king. Noting his understanding, the puzzle spirit allows his consciousness to retreat, thus giving Yugi full control for this duel, while above them, Pegasus chortles, calling it such delightful drama, the two beloved brothers who would go to any lengths for each other must now be locked in bitter conflict. Nonetheless, he expresses hope that they will both duel well, with this being their cue to begin. Taking the first move, Yugi decides to come out swinging, summoning his Media Dragon in attack mode, while Seto responds by playing Mammoth Graveyard and face down defense and ending his turn there. Back with Yugi, he keeps up his aggressive stance, having Media Dragon destroy Mammoth Graveyard, while also bringing out Familiar Knight, since with what he knows of Seto and his deck from his many losses to him, he knows that he needs to get as many strong monsters out on the field as he can as quick as he can, if he wants to attain the win condition he has planned. Now it is Seto's turn again, and he summons Feral Imp in attack mode, with all green sprite wasting no time leaping onto Familiar Knight's chest and beheading it with a single slash of its razor claws. While this is a blow to Yugi, costing him 100 life points, it is an acceptable loss as it lets him immediately replace Familiar Knight with his Blackland Fire Dragon, courtesy of the Knight's effect. The only real drawback is that Seto is also allowed to summon a 4 star monster from his hand, with him choosing Celtic Guardian, putting them at 2 monsters each. Nonetheless, Yugi's monsters are still stronger than Seto's, so this should not be a long standing problem, or at least that is what Yugi thinks, until his brother plays a spell card before ending his turn. Swords of Revealing Light. Suddenly, Yugi finds himself paralyzed for three whole turns, more than enough time for Seto to plan a counterattack. While up above, Teya, Tristan, Mokuba, and Bakura comment on how it's funny Seto brought out a swordsman, while Yugi went with a dragon, that it's kind of like the two brothers chose each other's style of monster rather than their own. Joey, who is the most experienced duelist, agrees that come to think of it, Yugi's aggressive dueling style in this match actually kind of reminds him of how Seto can get when he's in the zone. While Seto's been playing it safe, like how Yugi does sometimes when he's unwilling to lose. Looking Puzzled, Tristan asks what Joey's getting at here, though it is Teo who answers, saying it's obvious, isn't it? Seto and Yugi have been through so much together that it's only natural they've rubbed off on each other, which honestly makes this whole duel all the more sick and twisted, since two brothers who love each other shouldn't be forced to fight. On this point, no one disagrees with her, and so silence falls on the balcony, as down below, Yugi begins his turn. Though in truth, it isn't much of a turn, as all he can do is lay a trap card face down and end it, while Seto does even less, passing entirely. Returning to Yugi, Yugi, he draws Command Knight, and so plays it immediately, wanting to keep building up his forces, even if its attack boosting effect doesn't work on the two dragons he has on the field. He then ends his turn, allowing Seto to summon his giant soldier of stone, doing so in face-up defense mode as something of a deterrent, though unfortunately for the brunette, his brother is not deterred at all, drawing and summoning Joker's Knight next. Thanks to Command Knight's presence, Joker's Knight has granted an extra 400 attack points, giving enough power to destroy Seto's giant soldier of stone, something he promises to do as soon as the swords are gone next turn. Turn. Smiling with a hint of cockiness, Seto replies that Yugi will have his chance, though not before he takes the knight out for a spin. He then plays Brain Control, temporarily possessing Joker's Knight and having it destroy Command Knight to both drop Yugi's life points to 1400 and take away Joker's ability to destroy his giant soldier. He then switches Feral Imp and Celtic Guardian to defense mode, thus ending his turn and with it ending the sword's ability to halt Yugi's attacks. Capitalizing on this fact, Yugi has his two dragons decimate Seto's Feral Imp and Celtic Guardian, though since they're both in defense mode, he doesn't lose any life points. The same cannot be said of Yugi the following turn, however, as when Seto draws Gaia the Fierce Knight, he fuses it with his Curse of Dragon to summon Gaia the Dragon Champion. It then goes on to prove the truth of its name by destroying Joker's Knight, which along with demonstrating its supremacy over its fellow knight, also costs Yugi 200 more life points, bringing him down to 1200. Nonetheless, the boy with the tritoned hair does not seem overly worried, as when his turn rolls
rolls around, he plays Gift of the Martyr, allowing Media Dragon to absorb the power of Blackland Fire Dragon, temporarily giving it 3,300 attack, with that being more than enough to destroy Gaia and drop Seto to 1,300, thus closing the gap between them significantly. However, knowing that to lose here would mean Yu Yu will have to anti his soul against Pegasus, Seto refuses to give up control of this duel for even a moment, with fate rewarding his devotion to his brother by bestowing him with his favourite card, the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Summoning Blue Eyes with a cry, Seto commands it to attack Media Dragon at once, since with Gift of the Martyr having worn off, this damage will be enough to wipe out the remainder of Yugi's life points. Flying into the air, the miniature Blue Eyes then unleashes its white lightning, while meeting Yugi's eyes, Seto thanks him for an incredible duel. However, here Yugi shakes his head, saying the duel's not over yet, as he activates his trap for when the sword's revealing light rune effect, negate attack. This creates a barrier around Media Dragon, shielding it from Seto's Blue Eyes, though it seems Yugi isn't done, as with a smile, he informs Seto that he really should be the one thanking him, as he's been trying to get him to summon his Blue Eyes all game. Looking stunned, Seto asks why Yugi would want him to have his strongest monster, to which the spiky head boy answers that he always knew in order to win he'd have to beat the dragon, so he's been building a strategy to topple it, which he can now put into play. Good to his word, Yugi then summons Silent Magician level 4 and calls for it to ready its attack despite the fact that it has 2,000 fewer attack points than Blue Eyes, meaning if it hits, Yugi will have eliminated himself from the tournament. However, as Seto knew his brother would, Yugi has more to his plan than just this. Playing next the spell card Silent Burning, as he reveals the key part of his strategy was to make Seto shrink his hand as much as possible, since this play will only work if he has one card or less. Thankfully, he has one exactly, meaning that by the effect of Silent Burning, Seto must draw five more cards, with Silent Magician gaining 2,500 more attack points and being able to transform into the powerful Silent Magician level 8. On these words, Seto and everyone watching witnesses as Silent Magician undergoes a metamorphosis, growing from a small child into a majestic woman. Then, with a flourish of her wand, she blows Blue Eyes away, reducing Seto to 800 life points and bringing it into one of the strongest monsters in the game. Yugi then asks what his big bro thought of this play, with Seto praising it as well thought out and quite clever since he had no idea he was being led into a trap, though there's one problem with it. By forcing him to draw so many cards, Yugi gave him many chances to draw exactly what he needed to make a comeback. Looking a little disconcerted, Yugi asks what Seto means, since Blue Eyes is his strongest monster, to which the Brunette answers that in terms of attack points, that is true, though Grandpa's deck contains one monster even greater, questioning if Yugi remembers what it is. In a tone of stunned disbelief, Yugi asks if it's really possible that his brother's drawn Exodia, since no one's ever been able to call him, though with a shake of his head, Seto replies that Silent Burning only gave him four of the pieces. Now it's his draw, and what will likely be the last draw of the duel, as if he can't draw Exodia, Silent Magician will probably take him out this turn, but if he can, he wins. Either way, it's up to the heart of the cards now, just like it should be. Fingers shaking a little, Seto then lays his hands on top of his deck, and as warmth runs up his right arm, he draws, to find the right arm of the Forbidden One, just as he needed. Smiling confidently now, Seto states that he really did mean it when he called this an incredible duel. Then, as he lays out the five pieces of the Forbidden One, Exodia bursts onto the field and obliterates Silent Magician. And just like that, the duel is at an end, with Seto being the one who will now advance to duel Pegasus for the title of King of Games, as well as Grandpa's soul. Walking around to stand beside his brother, Yugi congratulates Seto on his win, though also warns him to be safe, remembering the duel he had with Pegasus via videotape. Nodding solemnly, Seto promises that he won't let that pompous slime win. Then, as he tilts his head upwards, he locks eyes with Pegasus. Like always, the Duel Monster's creator exudes an aura of smug superiority, though beneath the surface, he is troubled. Due to Lil Yugi being the one who lost against his brother rather than the puzzle spirit, defeating Seto Boy won't give him the claim to the Millennium Puzzle that he had wanted. Not only that, but he also worries that the puzzle has given the Murder Brothers some magical protection, since he was unable to steal Mokuba's soul during the videotape duel, meaning Seto might also be immune to his under handed tricks. However, this second fear at least is unfounded, as when Pegasus steps into the duel box for the final match, his Millennium Eye is able to show him the young man's hand and strategy as clearly as it ever did. From this brief glance into Seto's mind, Pegasus sees that he doesn't want to drag this match out if he can help it, and that he intends to win the same way he did against his brother, with Exodia. To this end, when he doesn't get any pieces in his first hand, he plays the spell Monster Recovery, allowing him to reshuffle his hand into his deck and draw five fresh cards. Unfortunately, this only yields a single leg of the Forbidden One, with Pegasus coyly accusing him of being scared, since he remembers the defeat he handed him at the Intercontinental Championship, and knows that this time, the stakes are much higher. Refusing to rise to this bed, 
bait, Sido instead lays some of his own, playing Sangin in face down defense mode and ending his turn. But this merely makes Pegasus tut, as he asks if Sido Boy takes him for a fool. Destroying that Sangin would be just what the boy wants, as it would let him get another Exodia piece. Though he supposes it can't be helped, but if he's going to do it, he'll do it his way. He then plays his first card, the Elemental Hero Spark Man in attack mode, before equipping it with his Spark Blaster Spell card, which he uses to force Sangin into attack mode, thus allowing him to inflict 600 points of damage when the orange gremlin is destroyed a moment later. By now, Yugi has joined his friends on the viewing platform, and as he peers down at the field, Joey asks if he's ever heard of these elemental hoosets, since he sure as heck hasn't. Sighing, Yugi confirms that he has, though only through hearsay, since the rumour is that they're a new type of monster industrial illusions is in the process of creating, though due to their powerful abilities, they haven't been released to the public yet. Frowning deeply, Mokuba calls this completely unfair, since Seto shouldn't be forced to play against special cards that no one but Pegasus has access to, though with another sigh, Yugi replies that while he agrees with his brother, it's hardly surprising that Pegasus isn't fighting fair. Back with Seto, it is finally his turn, and knowing nothing in his hand can beat that spark man, he simply plays his mystical elf in face down defense mode, before ending his turn with a scowl. Chuckling foppishly, Pegasus tells Seto Boy not to look so mad, since the whole reason he chose to use this deck instead of one of his many others is because Seto reminded him of a hero when they first met, thanks to that pure heart of his. If anything, he should take this deck choice as a compliment. Still scowling, Seto sarcastically quips that he's flattered, to which Pegasus corrects that flattened might be more accurate, as he reveals that his Spark Blast can be activated more than once, with Sparkman then using it to switch Mystical off into attack mode, before shocking her into the graveyard for 800 more damage. This leaves Seto with only 600 life points, while Pegasus is still in his full 2000. Though it seems the card magnate is not done yet, as with a flourish, he lays one face down card, then ends his turn. Recognizing that playing cautious isn't getting him anywhere, Sido decides to switch up his strategy, summoning his horn imp and using an equip spell of his own to give it a 700 attack point boost via Horn of the Unicorn. This at last gives the brunette a monster strong enough to tangle with that spark man, and so wasting no time, he has his imp impale the hero on its horn, destroying it and dealing Pegasus 400 points of damage. After his rocky start, this small victory gives Sido a modicum of his confidence back, though it's shattered a moment later when Pegasus reveals that he knew Seto would do that, and so had a spell waiting for this very moment. He then flips the warrior returning alive face up, causing Sparkman to reappear on the field and effectively nullifying Seto's last move. Trying not to let this bother him, Seto calls Pegasus a fool as he would just destroy it again next turn for the same amount of life point damage, though here the Industrial Illusion CEO disagrees, starting his turn off by playing the Field Spell Fusion Gate. He then condescendingly explains that Field Spells work similar to Field Power Bonuses, though this one is rather special, as instead of boosting attack and defense, it allows fusion without a polymerization spell. Case in point, he can now fuse his elemental hero Spark Man with the elemental hero Clay Man in his hand to create elemental hero Thunder Giant. At once, Spark Man disappears into a swirling void with a yellow clad behemoth taking its place. Though this is not the worst of it, as when Thunder Giant appears, a bolt of lightning descends from the heavens to destroy Hornium. Smirking, Pegasus then explains that this is Thunder Giant's special ability. It can destroy anything weaker than it when summoned, while also adding the barb that he's sure Seto Boy must be at least a little impressed, as he knows how strongly the young man believes in the power of friendship and becoming stronger through one's bonds, something his fusion deck excels at. Seto does not dignify this taunting with a response, instead moving right into his turn. Due to Duelist Kingdom rules, that Thunder Giant was unable to attack him directly, though unless he draws something strong now, he has no doubt that Pegasus will find a way to use that big bruise to decimate his life points. Thankfully, it seems the heart of the cards are listening, as when Seto draws, he sees the Dark Magician, and so plays it in attack mode, with one Dark Magic attack being all it takes to cut Thunder Giant down to size, while also dropping Pegasus to 1500 life points. From the look on the silver haired man's face, Seto can see that he is as shocked by this outcome as Seto himself is, with the youth realizing that since he drew the card and played it straight away, there was no way for Pegasus to plan for it, even by reading his mind. This might be just the strategy he needs to win, so long as the heart of the cards can keep providing for him. However, there is still the matter of how to keep his monster on the field safe. Thankfully, he has a plan here too, as he activates magical hats to shield Dark Magician, while also storing a spellbinding circle under one of them. Unable to resist returning the favor for the bevy of taunts Pegasus has been hurling his way, Seto informs his opponent of exactly what he's doing, 
while adding that he doesn't know which hat contains what, so even if the creep looks into his mind, he'll find nothing useful. To his dismay, when Pegasus attempts to call this bluff, he finds it to be true, with Seto being as blind as him, a fact which only adds to the silver-haired man's aggravation, while his ears are assailed by the adolescent caterwauling of Seto Boy's insipid friends, as they cheer him on and declare that he, Pegasus, can't cheat anymore. Having had quite enough of this, Pegasus informs his young opponent that it is time they bring this duel to the next level, while all around him, dark shadows swirl and coalesce, until finally an orb of darkness has obscured the duel box, cutting Seto off from his friends, and marking the start of their shadow game. Pegasus then begins his turn by playing a face down spell or trap, along with Vision Hero Witch Raider, while stating that though he is very proud of all the hero cards he has helped create, he feels the Vision Heroes suit him best. Wouldn't Seto Boy agree? On the word Vision, Pegasus' Millennium Eye flashes ominously, though paying this no heed, Seto retorts that Pegasus isn't any kind of hero. Cackling at this spunk in spite of his predicament, the Industrial Illusion CEO jeers that he is afraid harsh words won't protect him from what's coming, as he instructs Vision Hero Witch Raider to use her special ability. At once, the so-called hero opens fire on all four of Seto's magical hats, with them each being destroyed along with Spellbinding Circle, leaving Dark Magician exposed and vulnerable. Then to cap it off, the battle phase begins, with Witch Raider rushing in and blasting Dark Magician at point-blank range, dropping Seto to 400 life points and destroying one of the only cards in his deck that could possibly stand a chance against those terrifying hero monsters. Now that it is his turn again, Seto summons his Curse of Dragon in defense mode, figuring it might at least be able to keep him in the duel, though as he does, he feels a wave of fatigue wash over him, with Pegasus taunting the Shadow Realm tends to take a toll on those not blessed with the Millennium Item, and he can assure him that as this duel goes on, it's only going to get worse for Seto Boy. Wanting to test the limits of his young opponent's endurance, Pegasus decides to hold off on summoning anything new this turn, instead simply destroying Curse of Dragon and allowing Seto Boy to throw out some new paltry defense monster, who Vision Hero Witch Raider can make short work of just as easily. This becomes the way of things over the next few rounds, with Seto finding it harder and harder to stay upright in his chair with each passing turn. Seeing Seto flagging, Pegasus coos that he can make this all go away if the boy wants. All he has to do is surrender. Sure, he'll lose his soul, but from the way things are going, it seems more likely it's going to be devoured by the Shadow Realm. Better to face oblivion safe inside a card, rather than here alone in the dark. However, it seems this was just the wrong thing to say, as from the gloom, a voice Pegasus knows well rings out, that of Yugi Boy, as he declares that his brother is never alone. A moment later, the brat Mokuba adds his voice to this, with Joey Wheeler and the others soon following. Together, they create a most irksome cacophony, though in contrast to Pegasus' reaction, the sound of these voices seems to give Seto strength, with him straightening in his seat, while on his forehead, the Millennium symbol glows. Curse that Yugi Moto! He must have wished upon his puzzle to keep his brothers together. Together. That can be the only explanation, though it doesn't matter now, since even if the Shadow Realm cannot dispatch this young upstart for him, beating him in a duel will be more than enough to bypass the puzzle's protection. However, for now it is Seto's turn, and feeling his head clearing, he informs Pegasus that while he may not have a Millennium Item to give him strength, he has been blessed in other regards, having been gifted the support of his brothers and friends, though this is not the only gift he has received, as he was also given his grandpa's deck, the man Pegasus kidnapped, and whose deck he will now use to defeat him and end his reign of terror. He then draws, and without even looking, knows he has gotten just the card he needs, crying for Blue Eyes to help him out as he summons it onto the field. At once, the blue dragon appears, though rather than manifesting as a miniature model on the table, a life-sized beast takes form behind Seto, a menacing glare on its face as it stares at Pegasus. The young brunette then commands it to attack Vision Hero Witch Raider, though to his shock and horror, Pegasus activates a trap just as the white lightning launches. In the chaos of the moment and the smoke cloud that follows, Seto cannot see what card Pegasus used, though when his vision is at last restored, he is dismayed to see Witch Raider still on the field. Cackling malevolently at the look on Seto's face of this failure, Pegasus reveals his trap to be Invincible Hero, a card which allows him to make his hero monsters immortal for one turn, even if he does still take battle damage. Checking the life point gauge, Seto sees that this is true, with Pegasus having 1200 life points, which is still three times more than his 400, though between the voices of his friends and Blue Eyes by his side, he feels far more hopeful than he did a moment ago. Seeing this hope, Pegasus decides to take a peek into his opponent's mind, on the off chance he has some strategy to beat him, though from what he can see, it is simple childish optimism. 
Dragon, as while the Blue Eyes White Dragon is strong, it is not unstoppable, and with a pitiful hand of two measly Exodia pieces, the spell card Multiply and Silver Fang, Pegasus knows he has nothing to fear. In fact, now would be a better time than any to begin his endgame strategy, as Setter Boy's devastation will be all the more severe, coming off the high of his small victory. To this end, he once more activates his Fusion Gate, fusing his Vision Hero Ferris and Vision Hero Increase from his hand to summon Vision Hero Adoration, a striking figure all in black who is truly worthy of calling himself a hero. Pegasus then activates Adoration's effect, declaring that it will allow him to reduce the attack of one monster on Seto's field by the attack points of one of his Vision Heroes, with him choosing Blue Eyes and Witch Raider, so that the once mighty dragon is reduced to 300 attack points. In such a weakened state, one attack from Adoration will spell the end for Seto Boy. However, having a flash of inspiration, Seto tells the Duel Monster's creator not to count him out just yet, as he activates his own spell, Multiply, using it to split his blue eyes into three, now that it has less than 500 attack points. Testily, Pegasus asks what his point is, since three weak dragons are as useless as one, though here Seto replies they won't be weak for long, and it's all thanks to Pegasus. Definitely irked now, the Silverhead Man asks what he means, to which Seto replies that like field power bonuses, this field spell seems to affect any part of the field it touches, and from the looks of things, the fusion gate is on his side too, meaning he can combine his dragons to create the one and only Blue Eyes ultimate dragon. This horrifies Pegasus, who is forced to call off his attack as the three-headed dragon is formed, though from his side of the field, Seto grins that he's always dreamed of summoning this monster, since it's the power of three coming together to form something special, just like him and his brothers. He then commands Blue Eyes ultimate dragon to attack with Neutron Blast, and as the three streams of power consume Vision Hero Adoration, Pegasus's life points fall to zero. Letting out a bellow of anguish, Pegasus falls from his chair, while all around him, the shadows fade, allowing Yugi and the others who had been standing outside the barrier to rush in. When they see the situation before them, Joey asks if this means Seto really won, to which Mokuba cheers that of course his big bro did, while Taya smiles that she's glad Seto's safe. As for Pegasus, he has begun hobbling away in a state of disarray, though when Seto and Tristan attempt to go after him, they are stopped by Kimo and another palace guard, who instruct them to return to the balcony, as Master Pegasus will keep his word and dispense prizes, just as soon as he has recovered from his strenuous duel. Unfortunately for the card magnate, recover is the last thing he will be doing, as when he enters his private chambers, he sees that he is not alone. Standing in the corner is none other than Yami Bakura. In a weak voice, Pegasus pleads for the man to leave him be, though this is not on the cards so to speak, as with abundant malice, Bakura springs upon the weakened man and claims his eye, bringing him one step closer to his grander goal. Meanwhile, back on the viewing platform, Seto is approached by Croquet, who declares him the winner of the Duelist Kingdom tournament, granting him the title King of Games, as well as informing the Murdo brothers that their grandfather's soul has been restored to his body just as Master Pegasus promised. Then to cap it all off, Seto is presented with the three million dollar prize money check, though without hesitation, he hands it to Joey, telling him to save Serenity's eyesight. In a low voice, Tristan asks if the brunette is sure about this, since three mil could set him up for life, but with a smile, Seto replies there are more important things than money, while at his side, Joey begins to bawl with gratitude, vowing to never forget what his best bud's done for him. After this, it is only a short boat ride back to Domino City, with the gang's first port of call being the hospital. As Croquet had said, Solomon is up and about when they arrive, though this is rather short-lived, as a moment later he falls back onto his bed, having been bowled over by the weight of Yugi and Mokuba as they rush in to hug him. As for Seto, he stands in the doorway somewhat awkwardly, and as his grandpa's eyes fall upon him, he apologizes for not being able to protect him from Pegasus's shadow magic. With a laugh, Solomon calls this nonsense, saying he doesn't blame any of them for what happened, and if anything, he's grateful that Seto saved him. It is only when the old man says that he does not blame Seto for his capture that the brown-haired youth finally relaxes for the first time since the incident, strolling over and joining his brothers in the embrace. Following some paperwork to make sure that Solomon is able to go home, the gang with Grandpa and Toe head for the game shop, though when they arrive, they find a young girl waiting for them with a scowl on her face. In a petulant tone, she demands that Grandpa hand over his blue-eyes white dragon, while also calling him a thief, an act which causes Seto to bristle, as he tells this brat to get lost, since there's no way he's giving his blue-eyes to some snot-nosed punk. Flaring up as well, the girl, who introduced herself as Rebecca Hawkins, demands that Seto duel her for it then, and feeling rather confident after having just beaten the duel monster's creator, he accepts. From here, the duel goes much like in canon, with Seto and Rebecca inadvertently replaying the same duel their grandfathers did years ago. Similarly, upon learning that Rebecca's claims are legitimate thanks to the arrival of Arthur Hawkins, Seto surrenders and offers the girl the card, though with a smile she tells him he can keep it as a mark of their friendship, just like it is for their grandpas. 
Following this would normally be the legendary Heroes arc, the Judas Setter not being Kyber Corp's CEO, and Kyber Corp not even being in the field of game development, this is entirely skipped. Likewise, the Dungeon Dice Monsters arc is averted, but this time not because of an absence, but rather a presence, that being Seto's, as he joins his voice to Yugi's in trying to dissuade Joey from dueling Duke Devlin after he humiliates him with his dice trick. Heeding the advice of his two best friends, Joey agrees to cool his jets, storming off and preventing Duke from getting his revenge. At least for now. And so it is that for a few weeks, life returns to normal, with the only thing the gang has to worry about being school. However, this mundanity is shattered one night when Solomon enters Yugi and Seto's room to inform them they have a guest. Heading down into the game shop, they find a woman with long dark hair waiting for them, though this is hardly her most striking feature, as around her throat hangs a necklace bearing the Millennium symbol. Instantly growing suspicious, Seto growls at her to state her business, though in a perfectly placid tone, the woman introduces herself as a Shizu Ishtar, before stating she is here to give them both a grave warning. And that's where we'll leave things for now. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts, suggestions, or screams of rage in the comments below.